Hello and welcome to When Will It End? It's the movie podcast. One of a kind, only one in the land. We watch the movies. We go through a whole freaking series, starting with one. We work our way to the end. Charles, what did we just wrap up in our last episode? <laughs> Never done this before. We always look forward. I'm asking in this moment of change and transition, we just glance backwards for a heartbeat. No, too much. It's scary. 2020 is scary, man. Yeah. I started listening to like old episodes of podcasts that came out before. And it's just like the nightmare. This nightmare is just a continuation of a nightmare. So I'm strongly, I just want it all to go away. And I just want to look forward. So no, I have no idea what we did last. What did we do last? Well, uh, Who cares? chronologically, we last had a long argument about the, the Babe movies which you can go behind the Patreon to hear that edifying moment where two adult men got into an actual fight about the Babe movies. Yeah, I a honestly... glance behind the curtain. I'm, I'm wondering if we need to clear the air because I feel like your texts have been shorter. Your, uh, you know, your responses have been quicker, perhaps even non-existent. I've been very busy. That's what I thought. And no, I'm just... This is a moment to clear the air, Josh, not to hunker down into a little shell. This is like... I just am checking in, making sure everything's okay, making sure... I didn't do anything that's lasting. It feels like there's this cloud of acrimony around our babe fight. And I do think listeners should head on over to the Patreon because we did really get into it. I was pretty upset with Charles, but we got through it, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is everything okay? Do you need to, you know? I think everything's okay. Part of a good partnership is learning how to fight well. You know what I mean? Because conflict is inevitable in human relationships, especially when two men in their 30s watch the babe movies and talk about them alone in rooms together. So, yeah. You know, of course, that's a space where you know it's fraught with uh, a lot of emotion. And I just want to say that we got through it, babe. I think we did. We, wait, did you just use comma babe calling me babe? Or were you still talking about the pig? I was referring to the pig uh, from the, the titular pig from the series. That's a little disappointing. I thought you said we got you. Start, I thought you were calling me babe. Charles, I was calling you babe. Stop being so coy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Our guest was asking me what 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 to expect, and I was like, "Well, we talk a little bit, and then we get to the movie." And I'm realizing now, with someone in the room, how bad this part of the show is. No, this is good. This is my favorite. It's good. Part. It's good stuff. Yeah, I mean, okay, we're getting the thumbs up from the guest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she she's doing. No, but seriously, what was the last series? I honestly forget. The, oh, it was the Cornetto trilogy. Yeah, yeah We so yeah. enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah. Good movies. Yeah. A friend yes. of mine was like, "I I haven't seen the movies, but why did you call the the Cornetto verse?" And I guess we really weren't clear why we called it the Cornettiverse unless you've seen it, that they eat those ice creams. We never talked about the ice creams once. I would say it's a hallmark of our show to have missed a pretty important thing and then completely forgotten about it and then try to like awkwardly allude to it after the fact. Mm. Well, we're not going to do it this time because uh, no. I have a lot to say. Honestly, I also just some notes here. Everyone, like your little questions out there, use use the Internet. Wait, we're not, yeah, we're yeah, not yeah, yeah. we don't have every answer. We're just two incredibly good-looking men hmm. with patient, understanding partners. That's true. Yeah. And a lot of free time. Well, the only reason why I bring up, you know, just making sure we're okay is that I got a very surprising text first from my dad in relationship to my sister because apparently our relationship hasn't been good for six years. And I found out yes. You and your sister or you and your father? This is great. This is good stuff. Well, probably both. But my dad and I talk more frequently. And we're sort of getting through that. But my sister, has, we just like, you know, we do the pleasantries. We see each other at holidays. But even now, she's moved to North Carolina. I don't see her really at all. And I found out that well, she... Well, famously, she, she got married abruptly and did not... And sort of uninvited you in yeah. an invitation to the wedding, which was an amazing moment in the Hobby family saga. But I sort of get it now. Because like she... We got this big fight like six years ago because do you do you even care why should i even tell you should i tell the well, story just before of why? we go any farther listeners yes this is our high school musical episode so once charles gets through this convoluted lump in his family drama we'll uh continue with that and zach efron if you're listening we're you gonna get to you just buddy. gotta wait okay you just gotta wait zach uh on anyway, this show you're like everyone else zach you gotta wait well uh i had i was in a transition period and she i she, she, I don't even remember why she was getting my mail. She got a piece in the mail in the in. Uh, she got some mail where my license was suspended because I didn't pay a ticket, and she never told me about it. And my license got suspended. It was a huge ordeal, lots of money. Um, but of course, because I'm white and privileged, I think I even got to like drive home the day I got pulled over. With that like it's, I I got off easy. But anyway, we got into a fight because I was like. Hey, at least I want to hear that you're somewhat responsible for this. And I'd like, you know, 
if I didn't do it very well, we got in a fight. And then for six years, I've like, that's just been our relationship was based on that incident where I like got angry and hung up the phone on her and didn't call her back. But this morning we talked and it was great. And I'm looking forward to if she's not listening to this because no one does. But if she is, I feel like I'm at the end of High School Musical. That is your fucking, that's your attempt to hook this into High School Musical? Yes. That was the move. Yeah. You know, all we, of that. Ended. Well, you know, there's, there's some, you know, there's strife, there's miscommunication, there's misunderstanding. The scene where they, she thinks that, I didn't even really, we have to talk about that scene because he actually does say that he wasn't tricked well, into saying anything. We have to introduce anything. our guest first. Okay. We have to introduce our guest first. Um, I'm honored to introduce to our podcast listener, my fiance, Alice Lerman Gluck, who's claim to fame among many, uh, a, a, a list, no, sorry, her, sing, her single claim to fame, she's giving a lot of hand signals. Let me say it. Okay, she would like to say it. I'm not sure what it is, but um, yes, my fiance, my one of my best friends, uh, it's Alice Lerman Gluck. She uh, has a personal relationship with High School Musical, so we thought, let's uh, let's bring out the big guns for our big High School Musical ep. Allie, welcome to the show. Yes, hi. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed listening to your friendship catch up. That was um, a good way to start, and I'm glad that you. Um, have this time to just really dig into the meat of your relationship. <laughs> it's the only way we have. Well, we can also just talk casually. You well, know, that yeah. also happens. Yeah. I tried. What happened? What happened? I thought we were going to play that game the other day, and then I just never heard from you. You never got back to me. It was in your court. I said, let me know. No, it wasn't. Oh. Guys, take this off air. I don't I don't know about this. Okay, yeah, we're getting we're getting vetoed by the guests, which means that even for us, we're... I want to talk about High School Musical, or as those in the know call it, HSM. Now, why do they call it that, Allison? That's the acronym. Oh, mm. see, we've learned something already from our special guest here on our big High School Musical episode. Um, so, yes, we're, we're now approaching the beast itself, HSM, if you will. Do you pronounce it, HSM? Or do you just say H? No. HSM. So it's never pronounced. I mean, this is very hard to pronounce. You can do what you want, but people are going to look <laughs> That's at what you I learned. Funny. Don't stick to the fucking Hism. status quo. Do whatever you want, man. Bake a pie. That's pronounce the, it Hism. That's the point of the movie. Yeah. Well, let, before we get too much farther, Charles, let's, let's just address the elephant in the room here, Charles. Watching this movie, it was clear to me that you had a, a fellow... Maybe someone on the same vibration or spirit quest as you, but Kelsey wears a bowler hat in this movie, and <laughs> I was like, Kelsey. I, Kel- "Oh my god, who's Kelsey? Did you even watch the movie?" Kelsey is the composer of the musical. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, she wrote the song about soaring together. So I had two rocks in this movie, and Kelsey was definitely one of them. Well, you didn't remember her name, Charles, so I'm, I don't know <laughs> I, about that. It's pretty fucked don't up, remember. Man. The only person's name I remember is Chad because I wrote it down because I love Chad. That's funny because Josh and I could not figure out what Corbin Blue's character's name was for most of the movie until the very end. So I loved him so much, I paused the movie, looked up the actor, and then figured out the character's name. And then wrote down the word Chad on my little notes here. Which, Do you think he got uh, he got bullied because his name sounds like Cordon Bleu? I think it's a stage name. What? <laughs> he picked Bleu? <laughs> I mean, the French it's are the classy. coolest. Uh, Josh, I would like to point out that m- the first line, so I have like a eight bullet points of what I took away from High School Musical, or sorry, HSM. Uh, first line is, the hats are at the party are cool. The hats in this movie in general are awesome. Oh, yeah. The every, hat- hat, every hat is amazing. I think that every hat is very representative of each character's like inner turmoil, you know? Right. Like, we've got the bowler hat. We've got, I don't even know what you call the funky hats that Sharpay and her brother wear. So that's, yeah, like that scene where they're basically wearing the exact same outfit, but for the first audition, but then all, uh, what's his name? Troy, I assume? No. No, no, sorry. No. Sharpay Ryan. and... Ryan, yes. Ryan. Ryan. Okay. Uh, like, all he does is put on a glittery hat, and that's, like, how he gets into the moment of doing this big audition. The hats... If you rewatch this movie, the hat theory, I think, holds that the hats are the key to understanding, as you said. Well, you know, that it strikes me that that could have been a direction, because uh, in the biz, we call that a signifier... 
like a costume piece that you wear to get into character. So I'm guessing that everyone in that movie needs so much help getting into character that they all have a special hat. Well, it does seem like the, the kind of performance that are that's given in this movie is so all-encompassing. It's like the candle burning at both ends. It's like Kinski in Aguirre, Wrath of God. It's like uh, any Christian Bale movie. You just sort of see people melt into the role. I thought Zac Efron was Troy Bent Bolton. I said Bentley. <laughs> You did. You thought he was Troy Bentley, and then you well, realized that he's not Troy Bentley. Well, th- this Troy leads Bolton. us into okay. So, as a moment, a moment my, my beloved, beautiful fiance, whose uh, graciousness is transcended only by her generosity, um, mentioned she's in the biz. She's, of course, a theater professional. She works in theater education, but mm-hmm. she has a uh, and to to borrow a theater phrase here, trod the boards before. Mm-hmm. Yes. So uh, that's the layup, right? That's, uh, sure, that's not what a layup is. Wait, but. wait, wait, hold on. Don't lay up. I don't understand. Oh, she, in addition to working behind the scenes, she's also been... Well, you know, <laughs> back in my day, um. I was actually a performer. And I don't know if you know this, Charles. Does Charles know this? Does he Which know Which part? This? No, no, I, th- I think this is news oh, to you. Oh, amazing. Charles, Charles big I actually have a special relationship with High School Musical. You're married to Kenny Ortega? That- she fucked it. I'm married to Corbin Blue. No. Um, I in 2009, I was in a stage version of High School Musical that was an outdoor regional production in Albany, New York, where I played the one, the only Sharpay Evans. Oh. That And yes, I do have pictures. She does have pictures and video. Is, and let me just say, you know, I can't, I don't I'm wearing a hat. I don't know if you can see it. This is my, we can see the hat. Yeah. No, we can, we can see the hat. It speaks to yeah. your inner ter- turmoil. Yeah, and it's, it almost just blew off my little head learning this. Well, we thought we'd sort of a fun reveal. And let me say this. You know, everyone says Broadway, Broadway, Broadway. Albany is the capital of New York State, okay? So... Listen, free outdoor theater is a wonderful resource. As Allison often tells me in the morning, it's the last true holdout of artistry on the American stage. Is Disney on stage. Right, stage Disney. Actually, this was renowned as one of the summers where they chose the worst play they've ever chosen. Which was that? And they, High School Musical, and they had a, Wait, I thought a it was budgetary HSM. issue. HSM, yeah, okay. sorry. I know, I was just getting confused. Damn. I'm trying to get into the biz. You guys seem very into the biz, and I'm working We've my best. We've got the lingo down. Okay. But, and, and so they, so the the budget was kind of messed up, and that's why they ended up not only choosing High School Musical or HSM, but it's also how I ended up in the play because they hired local actors instead of um, professionals. So that simple cost saving measure is what set up this excellent guest appearance on this podcast to this very day. So think about it's that. It's incredible when you line up the butterflies like that. Yeah, all the ones that Ashton crushes. Right. It just. What would what would have happened if he'd crushed a different butterfly? When are we doing the Kut- the, the Kutcher verse? Because that is really going to be because obviously can we, we can't. Just say, let's just say what a huge part of HSM, uh, friggin' Ashton gets a shout out. Easier does. Watching any production as a time capsule of its era is remarkable, and I I, I actually guessed two thousand five. It was two thousand six, but I was pretty close. This is so fucking two thousand six. Like it's it's really. Staggering, but yes, the are we being punked? Are we going to meet Ashton? A reference that in 2020, I'm certain means nothing. Well, it does. It makes you think about how ephemeral everything is, really, because in 2006, the teens would have been like, "Ah, uh, yes, a reference for me." But I, <laughs> that's still a reference for me because I love Ashton. I want to meet Ashton, and I've never been punked yet. I want to. I, I think that, like, that's the thing with references is that it's meaningless to people younger than us, but. If we were, you know, a teenager in 2006, I can watch High School Musical or HSM any day and still feel connected to my youth, to the walls of a high school filled with lockers and kids bustling about. And to an age when when cliques were so extremely segmented that no one was allowed to do anything except for the one thing that they did. Very nostalgic. Let's say you're a skater kid. Yeah. Put that cello down. Actually, the I, fuck are you doing? I liked that the skater kids were the only ones that, like, at first were like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. What's that?" Yeah, they're pretty accepting. 
Well, I don't want to, you know, like, look, I'm always saying this in the cast, but look, those guys clearly fucking roasted a little a little loud. You know, they kind of, they probably got cheaped out before the, the, the big cafeteria hang. And as I often say to Allison, if the whole world just friggin' lit up a big old blunt, maybe we wouldn't be so friggin' mad all the time. He does say that pretty often. Like, are you talking about the world itself being anthropomorphized to have a head? As the head? Yeah, if a big cartoon planet smoked a big old blunt yeah. full of weed smoke, oh uh, probably we wouldn't have war anymore. I don't know. You heard it here, folks. That's I'm just I'm not trying I'm not trying to get up my pillbox or what have you. Soapbox, you are. Excuse me. You're trying Sorry, to get on the definitely <laughs> getting on his pillbox. J- Jackie O's iconic hat or my medication for anxiety. <laughs> they're the same. The hats uh, are the same. Uh, yeah, they're a cure. And I think yeah. in the scene when the cello guy doesn't th- my favorite guy, I don't even remember if he's wearing a hat. I think he like rips his hat off when he learns that it's a cello. And then he storms away. He's fucking livid. He's mad. He's pissed as fuck. Yeah. Okay, well, we have a rare chance to talk to someone who's actually inhabited one of the characters. So I have a question then. Because you mentioned that this HSM was, they this was like the notoriously bad year. Why? I I went into this movie and I didn't, I was, I didn't like it. Because, you know, I don't really like musicals. I can't pay attention to them in the way that other people can. But around 20 minutes in, a glimmer struck in my eye. A little uh, upward tilt to my corners of my lips happened. And I was a snapping. I was a toe tapping. And I was into this movie. I thought it was really fun and lovely. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed watching HSM. my, My maiden voyage on the great HSM. So I want to know what changed for you, Charles. Well, okay. So I do have a question about why this is considered to be the bad. But uh, what changed for me was the uh, the audition scene. That was the scene that gave life to this movie. It was actually funny. It was like one of the funniest maybe scenes from 2006. It was it worked in every way, not just as like a childish humor, but it just it was every character was doing exactly what they should have been doing, and it fit for the movie. And at that point on, like Ryan and Sharpay became. Like some of the characters I latched on to every time they're in this. Like, they're fucking hilarious. Josh, we're going to have to do the Sharpay bonus. We have to do a bonus episode because Sharpay gets her own movie. I'm really excited I've for this. I've never seen it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, That'd be huge. I mean, seeing Ashley, going back to the, you know, the ground zero of, of Ashley Tisdale's takeover of pop culture was exhilarating for me. Because <laughs> you, you have to have a good bad guy. Okay. And this movie reminded me a lot of Starship Troopers. And. You said that um, about. Like she, wait, what did you say that about last time? Um, I say it all the time now. Josie and the Pussycats. You said that also reminded me of your Starship Troopers. Well, because it's like really <laughs> aggressive satire like that. That's so awesome. And also the DNC reminded me a lot of Starship Troopers. Um, but uh, like, like you have to have a great villain, and I love that. You know, at, at the end of the movie, Sharpay is like, "Well, I guess you're the lead. I'm gonna be the best dang old st- st- right. understudy that you ever done seen." And it's like, "Oh, this is great." Like Sharpay is not like trying to murder. The dorky lady who doesn't well, have. Well, I know you, you guys have several movies still to come. <laughs> wait, hold on wait, wait, wait. Did you just get murdered by Ashley Tisdale? <laughs> wait, did you tell her the rules? We have like we have a lot of rules on this podcast, and I'm not going to give any spoilers. I promise. But we're also watch them in like a vacuum, you know, as like the anticipation of the next movies are there, but we know nothing about them. So it's not even just spoiling, but like referencing it as you know, um, uh, on its own terms. So tread carefully across these boards. I know that you have tread. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, Josh asked me some questions last night and I did not <gasps> answer them. I didn't answer them. So Josh. I'm, the I fuck? actually know the rules better than Josh. Josh, what'd you I ask? I like this pivots from Charles telling off my fiance to both of you ganging up on me. I didn't what did you like ask? In trouble. I wanted you to get in trouble. <laughs> I I just I what? foolishly asked some questions about what it like look all what the, did we're you, here. Why Josh, did you focus on this? What did you I ask? I move past this. What did you we're ask? Moving past it. No no no. What did Allison, you ask? Well, let me ask a question. I've always wanted to ask a guest <laughs> on this show. Yeah, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, my best. Uh, what Inside Actor Studios guy? Allison, is Sharpay here? Can we meet her? Sharpay lives really deep inside me, and I need a sort of an exorcism ceremony to get her out. What kind of pain did you bring to the role of Sharpay? So, you know, it actually, it a lot, a lot of pain because <laughs> I was, you know, bullied in middle school and high school. And, you know, for this role, I got to play the alpha, you know, like I was top of the squad. Oh, you were queen bully. Yeah, I was queen bully. It was 
it was it was pretty cathartic. It was pretty cathartic. Well, let me let me ask this: in this universe of High School Musical, Sharpay is both like the pr- sort of the preppy master of the school and also the coolest theater kid in the school. So she occupies a very interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen a character like Sharpay before. I thought about that a lot last night while we were watching. And I think what it is is that she she gets to sort of transcend above the drama geek stereotype because she always has the lead. And I think that's that's the key, that she's the alpha because she's not like a loser in the ensemble. Like she's like the best at the thing she does and therefore she gets to be cool. But if she was just like, in the pit. <laughs> Wait, what's that? What's that? What's that's that? What's that? Is that that sounds awful. What's that? Oh, that's like the people who play music. Oh, for show. okay. <laughs> yeah, musicians are dogs. <laughs> yeah, I was imagining someone... in front of me. I'd just like get it off the road or something. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's that that's your, that's that joke, right? Like, what's the difference between a dead pig in the road and a dead drummer in the road? This isn't Babe. Yeah, you're so stuck up on Babe. I'm, I'm really I'm worried about this. Just trying to get this. you back in. Just trying to get you back in. Back in. We just got through that. Just to get you back. Um, sorry. What's the difference between a dead lawyer in the road and a dead Trump? Wait, no, they're both the same. This is actually a pretty this good joke. The worst joke for Charles. This is surprisingly what? good. Well, I started one way, and I okay. What's the difference between a? Uh... Can I say something about a joke, Charles? If you start it one way, you need to finish it okay. the same, same way. way. Okay, so yeah, here's okay. the thing. I started it about pigs, and then then you threw a babe in my face. So I had to change it. I had to move on. I had to pivot. I'm sorry. You are would... you blaming us yes. for pointing out that babe is a pig? Yes, because you wouldn't let me take the jokes on my terms i started asking well, what's the difference between a dead pig and a dead drummer and rather than say well, oh i don't know charles know. what does bino.com think about that <laughs> dear god you threw a babe at me you slander bino when you bring it up in vain like this i have to say show bino some fucking respect there's skid marks in front of the pig bino gave us everything excuse there's me i need marks. to tell you something yes allison do you both know that this was a Disney Channel original. Yes. I didn't I did not realize that going into it. Yeah, so it it aired on Disney Channel similar to its ilk like like Xenon or um you know any of those those movies. Well, let me ask you this, Allison. You were, you know, theater is your passion in life, etc. When this came out, what was the like what was the reception from the if you will hard theater universe about like Disney making what is I mean and I think this is objectively the lowest common denominator possible musical. Oh no, honey. This was huge. Yeah. The theater community loved High School Musical. Loved it. They thought it was it was it was a parody in some ways and yet very real in other ways. Um it was emotional, the music is catchy, everyone learned the dances. I mean, this was a huge craze. Wow. So when you say the theater community, are you talking specifically like the high school theater community or just like in general, the theater community, including adults? Well, since I was in high school, I cannot speak to the Broadway okay. community. Well, who wants to? But I to? can say that high schoolers doing theater surely did love it. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, we wouldn't have Hamilton without HSM, if you think about it. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's in a, a way. It's we one more agree. butterfly. Ashton trod on to get like... The squishing of the HSM bug got us Hamilton bug. Yeah. And he'll one day squish that. I can imagine this like looming 12 foot tall Ashton just in the dark squishing butterflies. Was that what that movie was about? Why does he have to be that large? People are already bigger Josh, than butterflies. it's my imagination. Okay. What movie that's, is this? That's just what I'm thinking about. Oh, God. In the, in the butterfly effect, the oh. pseudoscience of the butterfly effect, which I think has been disproven recently. Uh, How can you disprove it? Yeah, you, it's just, you just kill a shit ton of butterflies and nothing <laughs> happens. You know, yeah. yeah, fuck it. Fuck. Well, I did, a, I did a lot of research uh, coming into this movie because I knew nothing about it, and I already knew that I was at a disadvantage because I like we watched Shrek the musical, and I just can't pay attention to lyrics as plot. And that was one thing that I really appreciated is that while the songs were sort of adjacent to plot, they weren't like telling the story, <laughs> so I could yeah. not pay any attention to what was happening and get like. The idea of, okay, we got to get in the game. We got to get in the game. Everybody's got to get you, get you, get you, get you. And then... Yeah, honestly, if you cut the songs from the musical, it would still stand. Right. The plot would still stand. So this was... So that felt good. But I also wanted to sort of come in knowing a little bit about it. So I learned that this was the number one selling DVD 
It sold more DVDs for a TV movie than any other movie before it. And I can't even say this. I did too much research because I found out a little bit about High School Musical 2 HSM2. <gasps> I found out a little bit about it. You violated the sacred pact? It. All right, so you're even. You're both yeah. even. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ten times as many people watched HSM2 than they did HSM1. Well, what? Yeah, That's nuts. Yeah. Because well, we often oh, talk that, about... That is very wild. We often talk about like how the first in a franchise is a sandbox, and this is so ludicrously economic. Like It's so simple that I'm actually kind of excited not to spoil the question later. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Troy <laughs> Bolton Josh. lives in a mansion, so there's nothing very budget about that, and we see the exterior of the mansion. Wait, That's <laughs> true. I, I, the Disney Channel production shit is so fucking funny because a lot of the movie actually looks pretty good. I, I like the colors. I like the, the shots inside the high school. I actually I think are actually quite good. Um, and yet, yes, we also get like the most generic suburban like parking lot bit like oh my god yeah I, well, the best part of this movie is that just to, 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 to bounce off what you're saying charles um almost so much happens off screen i think we only really see the the leads and sharpay and ryan have any emotional or internal experiences and mm. everything else happens elsewhere okay i see what you're saying because i do feel like the basketball players do have some emotional stakes in the plot chad especially leading them and right, but what what what's the is there a moment that we see where Chad's opinion changes? Because I feel like Chad kind of yes. comes around to. So the, you asked me earlier, Allison, how like I got into this movie, and I the audition scene was what changed it. But for me, Chad was me. He was like, what, what's it called when you have a person that represents you, the surrogate? Yes, is he my surrogate? Yeah, he's well, he's he was my surrogate in a way, in that his first lines are like. Theater's trash, man. It's just makeup and stupid songs. Basketball, the pop, 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 the dance. You don't want the pop, pop, pop of the music. You want the pop, pop, pop of the dribbling basketball. And then he learns through the movie, as I learned, that you should do, there's no status quo. You can do two things. You can do three things. You can play the celli. You can do whatever you want. And Chad, really, he has a growth. He, he, I think he learns the most out of anyone in the movie. And he really is like, he was my guy that I sort of just like followed around and learned from him how to be a better person. That's beautiful. I hear what you're saying about his change, like you sort of following that same trajectory. My question though, and I I think Josh just asked this sort of is, it felt like one moment we see a scene where Chad is trying to convince Troy that basketball is his girl and he should drop his other girl and also the theater, his mistress. Wait, and, wait, wait, I'm sorry. There's uh, then, a lot going on there, but I'll just move past it. I'll just uh, yes. Just what, let me what, let what me. What Allison is saying is is basketball is girlfriend and yeah. theater is Mistress. side piece. Who is the so, second girl you mentioned? His theater. Okay, so theater. theater is both the the girlfriend and the no. The first girl is Vanessa Hudgens. The oh, second, the girl, we actual even girl. Yet. Gotcha. I'm and, on board yes. now. And then the next scene, pretty much, like we see we see Troy and Gabriella having a conversation. And then in the next scene, it seems like Chad has had some sort of revelation where he's come around, but we haven't seen him go through something that's changed his mind. I felt it. And I I think the moment for me was when they trick him into saying that thing. And then Chad sees the repercussion of that. And he's learned that he's actually damaged his friendship and he's damaged a budding romantic relationship between someone that he cares about. And I do think that He's, he sees the damage that he's done, and that's the change that really makes him realize that, oh, no, I should care about my friend and not care about basketball so fucking much. That's, that scans for me. He's yeah. not being a good teammate, I believe he says. Right. So I guess it's still in the, the basketball. Chad largely operates in a basketball paradigm. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. Yeah. I mean, I would say all the basketball characters, I mean, it's true to the, the plot of the movie that everyone has their thing and that's their thing. So all the basketball characters are only allowed to talk in basketball metaphors, which makes sense and is realistic. Except for the baker. Yes. After he has his big coming out moment. Right. He speaks in baking yeah. terms, basically, at that point only. Creme brulee. Mmm. Yes, one of the classic baked goods. <laughs> Is that baked? <laughs> Curdled dairy dish. Um, okay, I want to talk about another emotional transformation. I like that this movie introduced, like, Troy's... Well, one of maybe my favorite pieces of dialogue in the entire movie is Troy's coach is also his dad. Mm. And if anyone has a remarkable off-screen transformation at a 
pivotal moment. It's Troy's dad, who is fucking pissed off for most of the movie that Troy is not uh, paying attention to basketball before the big game. Mm. Why is the big game so early? Well, the chronology of this movie is a bit confusing because a lot is happening seemingly within like a three-day window. Oh, wait. No, I get it. I get it. They're on Christmas vacation. For me, it seemed like oh. they were coming back to a new school year, but no, they're coming back from Christmas vacation, so this would be like the right. end of the season big game. Okay, well, in my head, I did what you did, Charles, and I convinced myself that they were starting the season with a championship game, <laughs> yeah, that's and I then they were going to work too. their way backwards. <laughs> And when we learn about the trials and travails of the Wildcats and the Knights, we get a real sense of this seething rivalry between the creatively named East High School and the even more daringly titled West High School. They're two different walks of walks walks of life. They're two different sides of the street. They're two different sides of Albuquerque. We've got the we've got the Jets and we've got the not Jets Sharks. The Sharks. Yeah. Um. That I, I just now also realized why he was so confused. Why. The Vanessa Hudgens, what's her name? Gabriella. 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 I only remember Vanessa Hudgens because it was in a crossword puzzle a couple days ago. And it was the day I watched uh, High School Musical and the clue was blank Hudgens from High School Musical. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to write That's down. That's fate. Vanessa. Anyway, um, why he was so confused that she was out of school now. Because again, I was thinking, oh, they're back at a new year. It's not that surprising that a new student shows up at the beginning of the year. But no, it's in the middle of the year. No one shows up in the middle of a year. Well, I think it wasn't surprising that a new student showed up. It was surprising that the same student that he met on his ski trip showed up. But I'm just like, to me, I was like, why is he so surprised that she's at his school? But it's like, it's fucking second semester. Well, let me just jump in and explain. Gabriella's mom got a new job and she had to go to Albuquerque. And at the old school, she was just the freaky math genius. And yeah. now she wants to be the what does she non-threatening want to be? musical star. We don't know what she wants to be. It's very interesting to me also how... So there's something very 2006 about the fact that she was the freaky math person made her, like, basically the scapegoat of her town. Like, it feels like, as someone who works with teens now, I think that if someone's claim to fame was that they were really good at math, nowadays teens would kind of be like, cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But in 2006, it was like you were going to get murdered for being smart. Well, I'm happy you brought this up, Allison, because I think it's important now to consider this film through the only historical paradigm that matters as a reaction to 9-11. Thank you. I, I knew one of us yeah. would get us there. It always happens. And, That's enough uh, of that, though. You no, said no. that. So. The, the anti-intellectualism of the Bush era, the nationalistic lead up to war. This is a movie about, it's actually, a, I thought, a surprisingly daring political movie in the sense that it both takes the action to Albuquerque, far away from the concerns of, of New York and all and what have you, the ashes of 9-11. Um, five years later. That's not that long. It's not that long. All right. Um, I just thought it was interesting that, like, it is about, like, it's a, it's a very pluralistic community in High School Musical. There's folks of different backgrounds and, and interests. Um, and... After, I think, like the cultural uniformity of our reaction to 9-11, this movie, I think, in a very modest and suburban and safe way, feels like sort of an unfurling of like, hey, sports guys, you too can sing a song and make a creme brulee, which is, I think, the sort of quiet, soft power of Disney soying our children. Right. It feels kind of like uh, Sesame Street in the 90s. They just they make it really diverse and they're like racism is over what's really the problem is that zeke isn't allowed to make creme brulee and now zeke can i'm just saying we're at this point we're a couple years into two unending conflicts and i was hoping the whole time that we would hear a little snatch of like uh, uh, like afghani war coverage like yeah. on radio in high school musical i was dying for that when i remake it in a gritty way which i'm already working on it's all going to be steeped in the violence of the war in Afghanistan it's, and it's Iraq. But strange to hear you talk about like the gritty version, like High School Musical. HSM is both a response to, to 9/11, but I thought everything in response to 9/11 was like the gritty version, like you know how like Nolan made the gritty Batman as a response to 9/11. And you're saying that no, no, this is like HSM High School Musical is like a colorful, like this is Disney's trying to shy away from the grit. Because there's too no, much Disney's grit. saying we can sing again. We won the war. Blah. Well, yeah, because famously no Disney Channel movie has songs in it. This was the first one. We can sing again. 
<laughs> no, they're all musicals. What was the what first non-musical that Disney made? Beethoven? No. The no. irony there is well, uh, it's a very musical sounding title, but the dog does not sing. It's probably one of the Disney Channel ones like Return what's the Return to Witch Mountain or whatever, Return from Witch Mountain or I don't know. This is No? I shouldn't have brought it up. This requires way too much I think research it was a to solve. Mickey Mouse defeats Sharia Law was the the first musical they produced in 2002. Um, I, I want to bring up a topic for both of you because I know you both have hot takes on this. Allison, t- to weave you into the fabric of our wonderful program, um, Charles hates Greece. He saw Greece and hated it or found it at least inexplicable and upsetting. Is that fair to say? I, I think for me... It's in this. I, we talked about it like in the same way that of watching a Burton movie. The thing itself isn't bad. I mean, maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But like just the way it's made and the way it's shot and the way people look and everything about it is very repellent. And I couldn't really sit through it without feeling a bubbling anxiety the whole time. Okay. Okay. So we we get it. You hated it. This is another heightened, vaguely satiric high school musical depiction of high school. I want to hear between these two fucking absolute eggheads I'm sitting with a little like like let's dig into this. How does this compare and contrast to Greece? Maybe the the first iconic high school musical, so to speak. I mean, I think Greece is very hard for me to understand because it's a movie made what four fifty years ago about a culture from twenty years before that. So unless I actually like sat down and talked to the creators of Greece, I I do not understand if it's a parody, if it's a satire if it's con- condemning like this culture or if it's like just approving of it i don't know it's very complicated but ultimately they both do seem to attempt in their way to be like hey here are two groups like romeo and juliet or whatever maybe you should become one happy group rather than sticking to your groupdom my hypothesis is that this is actually the antidote to Greece. HSM is the antidote to Greece because in Greece, I love Greece, but I think the end is very jarring because the conclusion of Greece is basically that uh, Sandy has to be hotter yeah. in order to fit in. That's the conclusion. And in High School Musical, they're saying, look, same plot, like you just said, Charles, same plot, different groups you know everyone's got to be their their way do their thing but in high school musical the conclusion is and that's okay whereas in greece the conclusion is let's stick to our own right in that's a hard a, way yeah that's like been the biggest critique that i've heard while talking to other people about greece is like the ending sucks like she conforms to another group idea rather than being what she wants to be and she does that the whole movie basically yeah and so i don't know i don't Greece, and maybe it's one more butterfly in the Ashton butterfly parade of musicals leading up to Hamilton. I don't know if we needed it or not, but as yeah, have you guys I, actually seen the butterfly effect? Because no, I no, I've never, know. never, never, yeah, never, yeah, seen never, seen never seen it. Never seen it. No, <laughs> never seen it. But no, I think you're right because Ga- Gabriella unflinchingly is herself this whole movie, which I think is really cool. I, th- I thought that this movie does it shies away from some stereotypes that could easily it have fallen into and then she like really doesn't change she really yeah. like she she or she expresses her autonomy to change in a way she wants to change as she says to troy in the beaut- may i say lovely conservatory on top of the high school with sweeping views of the american southwest but I, I like that like yeah rather than like trying to impress sharpe or whatever or playing to her strengths she's like i'm gonna be myself yeah yeah, and I sort of like that her, like everyone in the movie has a second thing that they're bouncing towards or trying not to show people. But Gabrielle is the only person that is like, I don't want to be the math person anymore. But she's not like, I don't know, she's like scared to be herself in a way that other every other character isn't. Like she doesn't have a replacement, really. She just knows that she's scared to do this thing that has gotten her into some big trouble, apparently, at her old school. Yeah, being smart, the worst thing you can I'm be. I'm sort of imagining like the way that Buffy sort of deals with her old school is like she set it on fire and she had to move to a new town. Like I'm wondering if that's what happened to poor Gabriella. Like they just chased her out of town with Yeah, actually in high school musical the prologue, they show uh they Wait, show what is this? the, the what dark is this? underbelly. Wait, are we let's talk about this. Gabriella's I don't know what's going on. 
Charles, it's a joke. There is no prologue. <sighs> okay, good. You scare me. These rules Jeez are very Louise. near and dear to me. Let me make my joke, man. Now the joke is dead. All right, moving on. Do you see the hell that I go through? <laughs> yeah, I killed Josh's it joke. Sucks ass. Bam. Jo- joke, dead. Yeah. Joke. By the way, dead. once in a while, Charles will talk about his commitment to good podcasting, and then we'll instantly renege that as quickly as physically possible. Yeah, I don't bring it up anymore. Crazy. I don't bring it up anymore. I'm just not. You've wait, hold on. You've you've canonically set aside your quest to be a better podcaster. Yeah, I tried it now. twice. It didn't work. Okay. So I'm I'm just back to my old self. Just sitting in my chair. You know, just quest to podcast is good enough for me. Well, Charles, you you said you had a question about Vanessa Hudgens' character earlier. Do you remember what it was? Yeah. I had a, a lot <laughs> going on here. I think we I think we I think we got to it when we were talking about her just now. Okay. Question is over. Well, I, I feel like it's we can't really talk about a musical without talking about the artistry of the music and the singing. Mm. Um and I have to say that I personally do not favor Vanessa Hudgens singing. And in fact it's a little bit like a like a gnat flying in your ear. Wow. The whole movie. Is wow, that's incredible to hear. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about it because, so, like, I don't really know what's good and what's bad. And if like, so you you do this. Is this like? Are they sticking to a style of singing that is generally what's in musicals, or is this like a new poppy or take on musicals? Like, this is two thousand six. Is this what's happening at the time, or is this something new? Yes. So in 2006, the pop musical was the biggest phenomenon and all of the musical training that was happening was around creating pop singers. Um, So this this was very much in line with the times and it was coming out of a period before it where um, musicals were like more classical. Um, And we've sort of moved. we're, We're now like we're in an in-between phase right now. But yeah, this was like a very poppy time where everyone, I mean, Vanessa Hudgens just sounds exactly like Jessica Simpson when she sings. Mm. I found out that uh, our boy Zach doesn't even sing. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, I was really doing a little research. I was so impressed with his voice. That's so sad. Well, so, uh, oh, fuck. I can't, I broke, I broke I was break. I was reading, researching High School Musical one, and the trivia slipped in trivia about High School Musical two, HSM two, and now. Well, don't I don't know. So I'm the one person in the room who doesn't know. Well, so he, please don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. He don't ruin it. Sings. Don't ruin it. Sings all. He, he sings all in the next one. So he sings. Oh really? Okay. That'll, yeah. That'll be interesting to hear about. So yeah, he he's a he's not a tenor. His voice because he's such a manly boy is too low for the tenor trade. So. But unfortunately, the screenwriters and, and people writing the songs really wanted a tenor for the lead. So they loved Zach's hair or something, but they got someone else to sing all the songs. And then the next movie, they tailored all of his songs to him huh. so that he could sing in a slightly bassier tone. Well, that that's interesting because throughout the movie, I was appreciating, although his basketball skills leave something to be desired... <laughs> His singing is so strong, but so to find out that he doesn't even yeah. have that, I'm like, what is he left with? How did he get this role? He can't sing. He can't play basketball. Well, let me say this. Okay. He has a mullet or He something. may not be a tenor, but Zac Efron's definitely a tenor, if you catch my drift here. Zac has star power, and I was actually watching this. I felt like watching like a young Tom Cruise, like a real raw charisma that was obvious to me. I like he. His for, acting actually is quite good. Yeah, for doing all the classic Disney protagonist traits, you know, he, of of like the sweet but sensitive basketball player who sings. I think he actually he sold me on it. He seems like the kind of guy who you would want to rally around. And and uh, I, I think they the most of like with all due respect to Vanessa Hutchins, she doesn't have like a burning charisma in this movie. That's not her thing, and in fact, people people really <laughs> hated her performance in general. Well, it's very mild, and I get and, and and like for an aggressively asexual movie, I understand that that the core of their dynamic is going to be this very, you know, innocent two souls in harmony, whatever. And I get that. But it also follows it follows a, a popular movie or musical trope, which is the idea of the ingenue. So the ingenue is like the lady lead who is very boring and mild, but her whole thing is to basically like be in love. Mm. And then the supporting lead, AKA the Sharpay of the cast is actually the one with the zest who like keeps the movie or the musical going. Well, what was the hardest part of playing Sharpay? You know, cause that, that you're, that's a lot of weight to carry. 
it, it's not a hard role to play at all. Um, you basically just have to be really sassy. I think you're and, selling uh, yourself does that short. Come does that come naturally to you? It comes naturally to me. No, I mean, I, I yeah, for sure. It, it, I acted, yes. But it's not a hard role to play. What what I mean by that is that it's extremely fun to play a role like that. Well, like, that it's could easy be. to get into the headspace of that. Yeah. But I'm just like, the, I, for me, when we get to our MVPs, it's going to be very hard for me to choose between Sharpay and Chad because Sharpay is, I've sort of like in the past, I've done like my MVP is the person that if this had been a bad character or a bad actor in that role, the movie wouldn't work. And Sharpay is like a character that if she is not successful, what's happening? What's going on? Josh's voice lit up. What's that? That is a picture of Mia Sharpay with my Ryan. <laughs> wow, we got to get that. They're wearing white suit jackets over a like a what, like a. We're mint, wearing mint green shirts. shirts and white jackets. How did you find that? And we so both fast? have blonde hair she and a lot of makeup wow. on. Yeah, I, I saved pictures. You set that as your background, you. your phone background for the episode. No, but this is what I had to do to my hair every day to make it curly. Whoa. These are uh, sock rollers. So I rolled my hair in individual socks. I look like a very colorful raggedy lioness. Wow. Wow. It's very evocative. But yeah, I just I got sure. to watch Go ahead. Some footage. Here's of- the last one. It's just me wearing white capris with a silver belt and a silver jacket. Looking very two thousand six in two thousand nine. I got to watch some footage of the climactic uh, finale of uh, the musical of Allison's uh, bit, doing all of this together with the iconic sort of hunched pumping gesture. I oh. tried to teach Josh the pumping dance last night, and it didn't work very well. Uh, but that's all right. He got the Buddha Judge dance down, so there's hope. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. There's still hope for a Buddha Judge presidency, so that's comforting to me. Hey, I'm going to write him in. Yeah, me too. Oh, great! He'll get two votes. Yay! Um, I want to see this scene. If you can share that with me at some somehow, because I'll send it to you. I'm, this is this is news that the star of this movie is now basically on the podcast. Yes, famously, I am Ashley Tisdale. She's the Ashley Tisdale of the Greater Berkshire uh, metropolitan That's area. That's beautiful. Which Thank is better you. than the original? Because what's better than the Berkshire? Wow, guys. Let me ask. I love it. I love this energy, That's Allison. Great. You did say that there was one scene you didn't enjoy performing. Yes, uh, there was one scene that I absolutely despised, Charles, and that scene was the extremely lengthy dance number "Bop to the Top," which, which is what's that a one? horrible song. Th- that's a very the call, their callback number. Song that starts with the Spanish. Yeah, bop, 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 oh, yeah, bop to the weird. top. Wipe away your inhibitions. Bop, 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 bop to the top. Strike your stuff. Were you singing along while you were watching the movie? Yes, she one hundred percent was okay. singing. Not along. in that song. No, no, that I, song. There, that song holds trauma for Allison. Right, it's very working, embarrassing. We're working to through that together that. now. Can you can you do a little bit of the Spanish? Um, I would like to decline. Thank you, but maybe just Thank a taste you. of. Uh, I'm all right, so thanks. Just let the record show that I said no. Ariba. Yeah, that was All weird. Right. That was the, okay. We'll move past it. We were we were talking earlier about Zac Efron's acting, and I think he is a good actor. But the the first moment of him acting was him taking off his jacket, which I think he nailed. But then when he moves the micro microphone stand and like beckons her, it was a little creepy. And I do think that he's a powerful actor, and I think the vibe in that scene is. Is in, I don't know if it was on purpose or if it was just fake, but it felt like very strong and not the like nice, happy basketball boy. He seemed very like, I want to fuck you. And it was very weird energy. Well, from the beginning, we sh- were shown Troy as sort of a sad boy from the very top um, because he has to go to this party. He's yawning at the party. And then when he goes up to, the, to, to sing at the mic, he gets the first line out. And then he immediately has no faith that Vanessa Hudgens will sing along with him. And he sets the mic aside and he walks away because he's like, no one could ever love me, right. basically. And then she does sing and he's like, oh, never mind. I am lovable. Yeah, it's mirrored in the second one. And they're like going to do their final thing. Yeah. And she's like, I can't do this. I just can't do it. And he says, hey, you know what? You you can do it. Yeah. And yeah, he is like, uh, this is definitely 
2006 nice guy where it's not actually that nice right it's like supportive but really also very manipulative yeah he, he seems like demanding as a partner because he has a lot of unspoken needs because he has so little faith in communication and i think obviously let's point out the elephant in the room here he shows up on her balcony unannounced is that the elephant oh that's no. true no. yes yeah. That, that was very weird. He's like, turn around, and he's just there. He that was fucked up. up. Yeah. Like, how, did he levitate? How did he get That's up there? That's some fucking nightmare on Elm Street shit. Um, no, okay. Troy's mother is completely absent from the movie. And no, Gap- we see her in the beginning. No. First scene. She yeah, says, yeah. go party. But we don't. She, he has no dynamic with his right. mother. Okay? She orders him to stop playing basketball, the game he loves, to go sing with a nervous woman at a holiday party. But that's that's the Disney thing is if you you have to get as close as you can to a dead mother, basically. So mm. an absent mother would would fit with the Disney. Chris Nolan line. directed a lot of Disney originals, <laughs> yeah, um, which bled into his later work. But no, then then uh, uh, Gabriella's father is absent. Right, you only see her mom. Yes, and I wonder what will happen. Ooh. Wait, oh my god, you think we freaking meet him later? Wow, we don't know. We'll find Thank- out what wow. will happen. In the Sticking to the rules, I love wow. this. Wow. All right. This is exciting. Another rule of life is that uh, I am employed and have to go to work soon. Okay. So we got to get down to the business. We got to get to the business. Let's get down to the business. But I, here's the nitty gritty. This is why I was truly invited on the show, just for this part. Yes. But we appreciate that you decided to stick out the rest of it. Well, I had something else to do, but I changed my mind. Oh, my God. I bought God. her coffee. I bought her a small pumpkin iced coffee from Dunkies with oat milk. So she's happy and she loves it. It's good. Okay, so let's start with the MVPs. Uh, Charles, I'm fascinated to hear. You talked about the internal struggle at play here to pick who the all-star, the MVP of HSM is. So it, it, it's no question. I'm choosing between Chad and, and Sharpay. Um, I have a soft spot for both because, as I said, Chad was my surrogate. And I do think he has perhaps the most emotional change in the movie out of anyone, a story about people accepting themselves. Chad is one of the few people that is fine being a basketballer and his real change is understanding that if that's okay with him, he should really allow other people to do what they want. So he's actually, he's a very sort of an outlier in the movie and I liked him and he really spoke to me and I liked when he said that theater was unimportant and then, but later learns that it isn't and like it, it spoke to me, but Sharpay on the other hand is fucking amazing. She's maybe the funniest person in the movie and she has a lot to do. And now I learned that Allison like is Sharpay? Wow, I'm meeting my my star and my role model and maybe the MVP. You know what? Someone else do their MVP. I got to think this over. I can't make a decision right now. Okay, I'll, I'll jump. Uh, Allison, I'm going to pass the ball to you. Uh, who's no? Allison's giving me a, a no. Well, I thought you just said I'm going to jump in, so I just uh, you know I assumed you that were going to jump in. So go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Okay. Josh. Sorry. Um. Okay. So I, my MVP <laughs> is Ryan. Yeah. I like Ryan. Say I think more. Ryan's sort of an enigma. He's Ryan's hilarious. like, you know, th- the fact that Sharpay and Ryan are actually quite good, I think is what makes this movie awesome. Yes. Because a more cowardly movie would be like, oh, like they're like boobs who have no sense of themselves and they're embarrassing themselves with their, you know, their, uh, you know, self obsession or whatever. Right. But no, they're actually awesome. And I think Ryan's little bust out. Um, during the finale where he sort of gets that sort of he gets a little sexy in there Mm -hmm. gets his hips moving Mm -hmm. he's got the best I think he has the best hats in the whole movie the the very ugly god that really terrible color palette from that era where he has the Mm -hmm. teal brown white hat and it's swirly it's It's like genuinely like diarrhea if we're going by the notion that hats in this movie um, speak to the inner world of the character then 100% I see why Ryan would be your MVP right like what's Ryan hiding there's so many questions about Ryan (laughs) He has a very dubious sexuality. Yeah. Because you look at Ryan, you're like, yeah. he he's kind of vibes like aughts gay, but I'm not sure. But here's and the like other he's thing. Obviously he's, dating his sister kind right. of. Right. Mm-hmm. He's dating his sister. Like all the roles are like romantic songs between him and his sister. They really lean into that. Yeah. A, a lot that. of questions. So I think Ryan as an enigma powers a sort of subplot to the movie that I found quite interesting. And I'm, I want to see where Ryan goes from here. So I'm going to pick Ryan. Great. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, all right. Well, I I was of two minds. Part of me wanted to give some love and attention to Taylor, a character who we haven't actually spoken about, but who was uh, the smart girl, the smart girl, new best friend, but manipulative best friend of Gabriella. Um, because I think 
you know, her acting is very good. She's a wonderful dancer as well. Um, she's a very interesting subplot where she decides that to get Gabriella as a friend, she has to, like, basically tear her heart out in front of a crowd. Uh, so that's very interesting to me. That's how Josh and I became friends. <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, at the end of the day, Sharpay is the MVP of this movie. I know it's a it's sort of a cliched answer, but she's really funny. She is dramatic um, in all the best sorts of ways. She she really carries the plot of the movie. Like this yeah. movie couldn't happen without Sharpay, and that makes her the MVP. Well, that makes my decision easier because at least now that Sharpay is recognized, I can not double. I don't think she needs two votes. So I'm gonna. I do think Chad also thinking about his T-shirts. Ace. Yeah. And also, I, in my research, I found out that uh, he, the actor, Cordon Bleu, designed Corbin. all of his... Cordon... Cordon? Corbin. Corbin. Okay. Corbin Bleu. Like Corbin Burnson from Total Recall. To I make thought it was easier. like Cordon Bleu. Uh, he designed all of his shirts. He came up with all the catchphrases, and they were all That's great. I come really with my own cool, my own backing track or whatever. Yeah. That was a good-ass shirt. But I started thinking about him as like the character in sort of opposition to Sharpay, because he's... Charvet is obviously like the villain character. We learned that she's not. And I really like Josh. So you pointed out that she's really good at what she does. That's really important to her character. And, and like Chad is also a villain. And I think he's like the soft, nice villain, but he's bad and he learns to be better. And I think Chad, Chad is, uh, he's great. MVP goes to Chad. Awesome. Well, I- there, there is one other thing I wanted to say about being Sharpay, mm. um, if I could, which is that being Sharpay in 2009 in Albany meant that I was a local celebrity because it was a free production. We had 500 people coming to see this show every night. We were doing it six nights a week for six weeks. For free. So it was a lot of shows for free. Well, there were some paid seats, but some was free. Uh, And I was working at Cold Stone Creamery at the time. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Yeah. So I I was constantly getting recognized by little kids. Oh, and then um, they would tip you and then you'd have to sing, right? Isn't that the Cold Stone way? That's the Cold Stone way. Yeah. Um, so I was constantly getting recognized. And I think the recognizability of Sharpay is a lot, you know, that really speaks to how important she is to this movie. Yeah. And she got her own spinoff, which obviously means something, too. Was it called like Sharpay's Magical Adventure or something? Uh, wild? It's well, called, she does yeah, ecstasy or something? Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. Oh, boy. Sounds like she does ecstasy. Um, <laughs> okay, so... All this talk of subsequent films in the franchise begs the question, Charles, at this point in the game, are you, my friend, asking when will it end? You know, this is this is wild. I was so prepared to be I've been so done with so many series because of trivial things and important things. And I was so ready to be like, oh, there's no way I'm going to want to watch these things. I am excited not, I'm not just like, maybe. I'm like, I can't wait. Because th- what this movie does so well is like, it could get thrown away. It doesn't fucking matter. And I'm like, it builds the world the same way that a Shrek did. You don't even, I don't even never need to see this again. It created what I want. And now I want to see where it goes. I am not asking when will it end. I'm ready for number two. You know, the way you said that, it sounds like you're about to take a fat shit. <laughs> well, I do have to go to work soon and I got to get that in there as well. Yeah, I got to time that out. Allison, at this point, obviously you're sort of uh, the outlier here. You've seen... The The sequels. What are your thoughts? If this was your single taste. Mm -hmm. I would say that each of the characters is so interesting to me that I 100% am not saying when will it end. I'm ready for more. I want to see how the characters grow and change. Well, you know know the the title of my favorite sitcom from the 70s? Seinfeld. Three's Company, because baby, I agree. Sign me up for HM2. You can call me John Ritter, because Three's Company. I don't know what that means, all, but all, I will now be yeah. calling John Ritter. We all agree. It's all good. He's dead now. Okay, John. Okay. Um, well, that takes us to the end of this episode. Allison, thank you for being our special guest. Thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. This is great. I want to close on two things. One, I never said the line I like before, which is when Troy goes, thanks, Coach, Dad, which is great. <laughs> coach Dad is also a spinoff. We're going to watch that. Yeah, showing, showing a big transformation by going from Coach to Dad is pretty huge. Yeah. How do you think that was written in the screenplay? Do you think it was Coach Ellipsis Dad, Ellipses. Coach Comma Dad, Coach Period Dad? Ellipsis. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. And lastly, we'll close on the biggest question. Is Sharpay named after the dog breed? And I can answer that very clearly. Yes, she was. 
She's supposed to look a bit like a Sharpay, and if you look up a Sharpay, wow. you'll see why. This is, I mean, I'm glad you're on the show anyway, because it's just really nice to have you on the show, but I didn't know we were going to get so much Sharpay knowledge, and I this is going to... I should have been taking notes. I'm sort of a font, a font of knowledge and wisdom when it comes to HSM franchise, so... Yeah, also, Charles... I'll note that we are recording this, so you could. I could listen. You yeah. will likely refer to this later, so yeah. no, no, no needs needed. No well, need to maybe I'll it. listen again and this take 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 notes this time when I'm actually paying attention. Great. Um, so let's let's close uh, the only way we can. Wait, wait, one, wait, two, no, no, wait, three. wait, wait. What is there? A, I don't want to hype up the listeners or myself. Is there a chance that maybe Allison can be a full time guest for this verse? I would love that, Allison. What What do you say? I accept. Oh, this, this is, is big. Oh. Well, okay, now that we've we've come to this uh, exciting conclusion, we'll finish the episode the only way we know how. Two, three. We're all in this together. together. We're, we're all in this. Was this from the the movie? We're all in this <laughs> together. Well, let, before we get too much farther, Charles, let's let's just address the elephant in the room. Uh, you getting some work? It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday, Josh. You getting some work shit? No, no. We're, uh, the the it, the record stopped abruptly for some reason. It seems to be working now. Sorry, this has never happened before. That's all right. Problems usually start when they've never happened before. So. That's true. Words to live by. Okay, so I'll I'll start that chunk again.